Chevy Chase cemented himself as a pioneer of the TV comedy world, starring in Saturday Night Live, Community, and the National Lampoon's Vacation film franchise. However, the 80-year-old comedian has made a reputation for himself for being quite difficult in Hollywood, with several controversies and feuds erupting throughout his career. He may be one of the more popular comedians of his time, but he has been hated by other actors, including Will Ferrell, Robert Downey Jr., Bill Murray, and more. Join us as we delve into the many reasons why Chevy Chase has developed such a bad reputation in the entertainment industry, who some of his biggest enemies are, and why. Ticking off the entire season, one Saturday Night Live cast. During his tenure as a cast member on Saturday Night Live, Chevy Chase earned a reputation as a viciously effective put-down artist. He had a knack for identifying individuals' insecurities, whether it was a pimple, birth defect, or minor imperfection, and skillfully using that knowledge to dismantle them verbally. In the realm of Saturday Night Live staff meetings, Chase was notorious for smirking at the suggestions of the show's writers. His dismissive demeanor often included bluntly expressing his disapproval, stating that he didn't believe their ideas were worthwhile. As Saturday Night Live gained momentum, propelling Chase's career to new heights, his fellow castmates and crew members began to voice grievances. Accusations emerged that he failed to acknowledge their contributions adequately, especially during interviews. Chase's ascent in the entertainment industry paralleled the escalating tensions behind the scenes at Saturday Night Live. As he basked in the spotlight, his interactions with colleagues became increasingly strained. The accusations of insufficient credit allocation further fueled the narrative of Chase's divisive presence within the Saturday Night Live community. During this period, Chase's behavior on the Saturday Night Live set took a darker turn as he reportedly indulged in a significant amount of cocaine. His newfound fame seemed to exacerbate his demeanor, leading him to boast incessantly about his celebrity status. Not only did he revel in his own fame, but he also took the opportunity to assert dominance by bossing people around on the set. Lorne Michaels while Lorne Michaels and Chevy Chase were once very close friends, their relationship took a drastic turn when, without any prior warning, Chase abruptly decided to depart from the show as his contract came to an end. Instead of continuing on Saturday Night Live, he chose to pursue several primetime specials for NBC. This decision marked a significant shift, effectively severing his ties not only with Saturday Night Live but also with his manager, Bernie Brillstein, who also managed Michaels. Following this break, Chase opted to sign with William Morris, further reshaping the trajectory of his career. The fallout from Chase's departure left a bitter taste among Saturday Night Live's writers. One writer in particular described him as a scumbag, highlighting the perception that Chase's actions were deemed unfavorable. The sentiment among the Saturday Night Live staff was one of betrayal, with some recalling him as deceitful and dishonest throughout the entire ordeal. Tom Davis, a staff writer for Saturday Night Live, confronted Chase about his departure, seeking an explanation. In response, Chevy attributed his decision to financial motives, emphasizing that it was all about securing a substantial sum of money. This revelation added another layer to the complexities surrounding his exit from the iconic show, Johnny Carson. Chevy Chase found himself entangled in the world of late-night television rumors when speculation circulated that he might be in the running to replace Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. Swiftly dispelling these notions, Chase made it clear to New York Magazine that he had no intention of finding himself tied down for an extensive period, conducting interviews with TV personalities for half a decade. In response to Chase's dismissive remarks, Johnny Carson, the iconic host of The Tonight Show, fired back with a touch of humor and sarcasm. Carson quipped that Chevy Chase couldn't ad-lib a fart, a biting retort that added a humorous twist to the ongoing banter. The remark, delivered in the aftermath of a baked bean dinner, only heightened the public's fascination with the potential dynamics between Chase and the revered Tonight Show audience. 
While the idea of Chevy Chase taking the reins of The Tonight Show is intriguing, the reality tells a different story. Despite the rumors and repartee, Chase was never seriously considered for the coveted late-night talk show host position. The entertaining exchange between Chase and Carson remained confined to the realm of speculation, leaving audiences to ponder the what-ifs of a Tonight Show hosted by the charismatic Chevy Chase. Bill Murray As we touched upon earlier in this video, the mention of a fistfight between Chevy Chase and Bill Murray likely piqued your curiosity. To satisfy that curiosity, let's delve into the details of this incident so you won't feel compelled to navigate away from this video in search of more information. The roots of the conflict can be traced back to their collaboration on National Lampoon several years prior. Even in those earlier times, Bill Murray and Chevy Chase found themselves at odds. However, the situation escalated in 1978. Chase, who had departed the show in February under less than amicable circumstances, made a surprising return later that year as a guest host. This unexpected reunion on the set of the show became the backdrop for a clash between the two comedic heavyweights. The tensions that had been simmering for years finally boiled over, resulting in a now infamous fistfight. The incident not only captured the attention of those on set, but also became a legendary moment in the annals of Saturday Night Live history. Upon Chase's unexpected return to Saturday Night Live as a guest host in 1978, a palpable tension enveloped the set, and not all members of the cast were thrilled about his comeback. Bill Murray being one of them. Murray, who had been brought onto Saturday Night Live to fill the void left by Chase's earlier departure, felt compelled to confront the situation head on. In a candid exchange, Murray didn't mince words, telling Chase that everyone hated him. This straightforward accusation set the stage for a heated confrontation. In response, Chase retorted with a biting remark about Murray's facial appearance, suggesting that his face was so filled with pockmarks that it resembled the ideal landing spot for Neil Armstrong. As emotions escalated, the confrontation took an even uglier turn when Murray made an offhanded remark about Chase's intimate life with his wife at the time, Jacqueline Carlin. The exchange not only intensified the animosity between the two comedic talents, but also added a layer of personal acrimony to their professional clash. Before the scheduled airing of the show, tensions between Chevy Chase and Bill Murray reached a boiling point. Chase, not one to back down, paid a visit to Murray in John Belushi's dressing room, challenging him to a good old-fashioned fight. The situation quickly escalated when Murray reportedly lunged at Chase, and in an attempt to intervene, Belushi leaped between them, unwittingly becoming the unintended recipient of the brunt of their blows as their fists furiously flew. Despite the physical altercation behind the scenes, Chase surprisingly took the stage immediately after the fight was broken up. In a seemingly oblivious fashion, he delivered his monologue to a gleeful yet unaware audience. Chase later claimed that he wasn't disturbed by the brawl, downplaying its significance. However, some of his former castmates reported observing a marked change in his demeanor following the scuffle. Unlike his usual cocky attitude, Chase appeared to be affected by the altercation, revealing a side of him that diverged from his typical confident persona. The aftermath of this backstage clash left a lasting impact not only on the relationships within the Saturday Night Live cast, but also on the public's perception of Chevy Chasey, Robert Downey Jr. In a curious turn of events, Chevy Chase returned to host Saturday Night Live in 1985, marking another chapter in his tumultuous relationship with the show. However, this time around, his return wasn't met with warmth, but rather with a trail of strained relationships. During this particular hosting stint, Chase managed to make enemies with nearly everyone on set. In a moment that stirred controversy, he targeted Robert Downey Jr.'s father, making light of his absence and callously poking fun at his demise. Chase's insensitive remarks extended to suggesting that Downey Sr. likely ended up in hell. Understandably, Robert Downey Jr. was far from amused by these remarks, creating an uncomfortable atmosphere on set, 
This incident not only added to the growing list of grievances against Chevy Chase, but also underscored his propensity for crossing boundaries, even when it came to sensitive subjects. Terry Sweeney In another troubling episode during his time on Saturday Night Live, Chevy Chase displayed animosity towards Terry Sweeney, who held the distinction of being Saturday Night Live's first openly gay cast member. Chasey's dislike for Sweeney manifested in a particularly insensitive suggestion, proposing a sketch where Sweeney's weight would be monitored weekly to check for potential HIV contraction. This suggestion understandably left Sweeney angered and offended. In the aftermath of this distasteful remark, Chase found himself in a position where he had to do some serious damage control. The network executives intervened, compelling Chevy to visit Sweeney's office and issue an apology for his offensive comment. According to Sweeney, Chase's reluctance to apologize and admit wrongdoing was palpable, reflecting his frustration at being compelled to make amends. Howard Stern. In 1992, Chevy Chase found himself unwittingly embroiled in a controversy when he was recorded disparaging Howard Stern during commercial breaks while appearing as a guest on Larry King's talk show. The unguarded comments were captured without Chase's knowledge. Once Stern obtained the tape, he took the opportunity to play it live on the air before reaching out to Chase directly. In response, Chevy bluntly instructed Stern to never call him again. Several years later, the tensions flared up again, when Stern, along with Richard Belzer, deliberately incited Chase by repeatedly calling him at 5 a.m. The persistent early morning calls served as a reminder of the lingering animosity between Chase and Stern. Despite the rocky relationship, Chase and Stern eventually reconciled. In a surprising turn of events, Chase received an invitation to Howard Stern's wedding. However, any hopes of a newfound camaraderie were dashed when, at the wedding, Chevy reportedly delivered a ridiculously inappropriate toast. This ill-advised gesture not only strained their relationship further, but also intensified Stern's resentment towards Chase, Kevin Smith. In 1997, Kevin Smith entered into discussions with Chevy Chase regarding the potential reboot of the Fletch series. However, the meeting didn't unfold as anticipated as Smith described it as an utter disaster. As the two stars sat down for a meal, Chevy reportedly made an audacious claim that he had invented every funny thing in the entire course of history, not just in comedy, but across the entire known universe. This display of extreme arrogance from Chase left Smith thoroughly annoyed, prompting him to cancel any tentative plans to collaborate with Chevy in the future. The encounter, marred by Chase's grandiose self-assessment, cast a shadow over any potential professional relationship between the two. In a surprising turn of events, Chevy Chase later accused Kevin Smith of fabricating the account of their meeting. This accusation added another layer of complexity to their already strained interaction, showcasing the discord and mutual distrust that seemed to characterize many of Chevy Chase's professional engagements. Rob Hubel. In a peculiar encounter, comedian Rob Hubel, self-proclaimed as the biggest Chevy Chase fan in the world, had an opportunity to meet his idol backstage at UCB Theater. However, what should have been a momentous introduction took an unexpected turn when Chevy Chase, rather surprisingly, slapped Hubel across the face in a manner that Hubel described as offensively hard. While Chase later insisted that the slap was done in good humor, as he shared with New York Magazine, the incident was undeniably shocking. Hubel, despite being on the receiving end of the slap, maintained that he didn't take offense, but acknowledged that the unexpected encounter left an indelible impression on him. This peculiar incident further adds to the narrative of Chevy Chase's unconventional interactions and leaves us with yet another glimpse into the enigmatic persona of the comedian, Dan Harmon, as the creator of the show. Community Dan Harmon, known for his reputation as a bit of a jerk, became entangled in a public feud with Chevy Chase right from the inception of the series. The clash between Harmon and Chase unfolded in a strangely public manner, casting a shadow over the production of Community.
What makes this dynamic even more intriguing is the perceived parallel between Chevy Chase and his character Pierce Hawthorne in the show. Pierce Hawthorne, depicted in Community, mirrors certain aspects of Chevy Chase's real-life persona. Both Chase and Hawthorne share qualities of being old, crotchety, out of touch, self-aggrandizing, and, in the case of Hawthorne, a bigoted individual who alienates almost everyone around him. The feud between Dan Harmon and Chevy Chase reached a climax when Harmon, in a controversial move, insulted Chevy at a party in the presence of his wife and daughter. The dispute took an even more public turn when Harmon leaked a voicemail that Chevy had left for him. The voicemail, though containing ridiculous and obscene content, had a certain laughable quality that added a bizarre twist to their already strained relationship. Despite the uproar caused by this incident, Harmon later extended an apology for his remarks. However, the damage was done, and the fallout from their public altercation had lasting consequences. Chevy Chase, perhaps fed up with the escalating tensions and public scrutiny, decided to depart from Community after the completion of its fourth season. This clash between Harmon and Chase not only added another layer of drama to the production of Community, but also became a defining chapter in the narrative of Chevy Chase's career, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell has openly expressed his dissatisfaction with Chevy Chase's demeanor, particularly highlighting concerns about Chase's sexist and misogynistic behavior. Ferrell, known for his comedic talents, has distanced himself from Chase, citing instances where he observed disrespectful treatment of women. According to Farrell, Chevy Chase displayed a snobbish attitude and had a tendency to deliver underhanded insults, creating a negative atmosphere. Farrell's disapproval of Chase's behavior intensified when he witnessed an incident where Chase made a crass and explicit request of a female writer. This inappropriate behavior was followed by additional demeaning language, leaving Farrell particularly put off. The clash between their professional values and the questionable actions of Chevy Chase contributed to Farrell's decision to distance himself from the veteran comedian. This revelation adds another layer to the narrative of Chevy Chase's controversial interactions in the entertainment industry, illustrating the impact of his behavior on the perceptions and relationships within the comedic community. John Belushi John Belushi, known for his comedic prowess, initially attempted to give Chevy Chase the benefit of the doubt despite ongoing concerns about his conduct. However, Belushi eventually reached a breaking point, growing weary of Chase's consistent poor behavior. According to Belushi, Chevy Chase had developed a troubling habit of constantly putting others down, allowing his celebrity status to significantly inflate his ego. Belushi found it increasingly intolerable to be in the company of Chase, especially when witnessing the comedian berating others. The once tolerable atmosphere turned sour, and Belushi observed that the overall work environment was suffering significantly as a result of Chase's actions. The deterioration of camaraderie and the negative impact on the creative process was indicative of the challenges posed by Chase's behavior affecting not only personal relationships, but also the collaborative spirit within the comedic community. Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson, who has been a fixture on Saturday Night Live since a young age, considers the show's set as a second home. However, when it comes to the prospect of someone like Chevy Chase being part of his work environment, Davidson expresses strong reservations. Despite not having a direct experience with Chase, Davidson is well aware of the lingering reputation surrounding him, marked by foul treatment, uncomfortable situations, explicit behavior, and, at times, outright offensive conduct. The comfortable and happy atmosphere that Davidson enjoys with his current castmates stands in stark contrast to the negative aura associated with Chevy Chase. Davidson, being attuned to the history and reputation of the seasoned comedian, harbors a deep lack of respect for Chase. This lack of respect is rooted in the knowledge of Chase's past behavior, creating a firm stance against accepting his presence in the Saturday Night Live environment that Davidson holds dear.
Donald Glover and Yvette Nicole Brown. Yvette Nicole Brown, alongside Donald Glover, found themselves in a situation that far exceeded their expectations while working alongside Chevy Chase. The experience took a distressing turn when Chase, known for his sharp and precise insults, went on another one of his tirades. Unfortunately, this time, the target was racial, and the African-American actors had to endure an unsettling encounter. Donald Glover, known for his role as Troy Barnes on Community Spanning Five Seasons, shared a challenging experience during his time on the show with Chevy Chase. Glover revealed that Chase frequently made racist jokes between takes and intentionally attempted to sabotage his scenes. In the presence of Glover and Brown, Chase not only used the N-word repeatedly, but also made a series of racially charged comments. The atmosphere became uncomfortable, and both actors felt personally attacked during these distressing moments. The tension between Glover and Chase prompted commentary from Community's creator, Dan Harmon. Harmon attributed Chevy Chase's behavior to jealousy, asserting that Chase was acting out due to an awareness of Glover's immense talent. This perspective suggests that Chase's actions may have stemmed from a perceived threat to his own standing within the comedic realm, leading to an unhealthy and detrimental working relationship on set. Reflecting on his experiences with Chevy Chase, Donald Glover shared his perspective in an interview with The New Yorker. In Glover's eyes, Chase appeared to be a legendary figure unwilling to acknowledge that he was past his prime. Despite the unwarranted remarks and racially insensitive comments from Chase, Glover maintained a resilient attitude, refusing to let the negativity affect him. To Glover, it seemed like Chase was engaged in a futile struggle against the passage of time, desperately attempting to cling to past glory. Behind the facade of cocksure arrogance, Glover perceived Chase as a scared individual, perhaps a scared little boy grappling with the uncertainty of the future. The situation brings to mind the words of Andre Gide, who once said, It's better to be hated for what you are than to be loved for what you are not. However, this sentiment may not have been envisioned with Chevy Chase in mind. Chase's journey is marked by a multitude of adversaries, and while his once confident and abrasive persona may have served him well in the past, it now appears to have contributed to a drying up of career opportunities. Consider this. When was the last instance you witnessed Chevy Chase in a new project? The scarcity of recent appearances raises questions about the trajectory of his career. Had Chase fostered a more amiable working persona, one could speculate that he might still be in contention for more substantial roles. However, the reality paints a different picture, with Chase finding himself cast in lackluster features such as 2015's Hot Tub Time Machine 2 and 2020's The Very Excellent Mr. Dundee. Now, the pivotal question arises. Would Chevy Chase's career be experiencing a more vibrant phase if he had cultivated a more congenial reputation? Alternatively, do you believe that the response to his often off-putting behavior is perhaps exaggerated? Share your thoughts and insights in the comments section below. If you found this discussion intriguing, Consider expressing your support by giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay in the loop with our latest releases. Stay tuned for more captivating stories from the world of entertainment. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.